and welcome to News Center. I am Ritu Singh. Now coming, starting the 1st of April, any UPI transactions of more than 2,000 rupees that you make via prepaid payment instruments, which is your online wallets or preloaded gift cards, etc., are going to carry an interchange fee. Now what is an interchange fee? It is the fee which is paid to wallet issuers, like your banks, payment banks, etc., by payment service providers, which is your phone pay, Google pay, or other banks, etc., to cover the cost of accepting, processing, and authorizing transactions. Now, this fee will not be applicable for person-to-person -person transactions or person-to-merchant transactions between a bank and the prepaid wallet, which means you and I don't have to pay any additional fee for using the UPI just yet. Now, for UPI transactions of more than 2,000 rupees through PPIs, there's going to be an interchange fee of 1.1%, and then the second charge will be the wallet loading charge. So, the issuer of the prepaid instrument, like your PTM or Ola Financial Services wallet, and so on, will now have to pay 15 basis points, or 0.15%, as the wallet loading charge to the remitter bank, that is the account holder's bank account, if more than 2,000 rupees is loaded onto the wallet. Now, MTCI has specified that interchange rates are going to vary depending on the profile of the merchants. So for specific industries, charges range from 0.5% to 1.1%. For example, UPI payments that you make to fuel service stations using a PPI instrument are going to carry an interchange of 0.5%. For education fees that you pay using UPI, the charge will be 0.7%, but it will be capped at 15 rupees per transaction, and so on and so forth. Now, NPCI has said that this pricing is going to be reviewed on or before the 30th of September this year. Uh, to give you an example of how these charges work, uh, for example, if I have an ICICI bank account and I use a Paytm wallet, now if I want to load that wallet with more than 2,000 rupees, say 5,000 rupees from my wallet to the bank, uh, Paytm will have to pay 15 basis point as wallet loading fee to my bank, which is ICICI Bank. Now, next step, let's assume I go to a retailer to buy a laptop using uh, UPI via my Paytm wallet. So in this case, the bank or the payment provider which acquire the retailer as a merchant on their platform, for instance, if Axis Bank or Google Pay or whoever put a QR code on the retailer's shop, they will have to pay 1.1% as interchange to Paytm wallet for facilitating this transaction. Now, experts believe this could be the first time and we could see more interchange being announced on other mo modes of payment as well. But as of now, uh, you know, no charges for customers like you and me. Now, joining me to take this discussion forward is G. Padmanabhan, uh, who former executive director at the Reserve Bank of India. We'll also be joined by Apasna Taku, who's the chairperson, co-founder and COO at MobiQuick. And of course, Sanjeev Kumar, the co-founder, executive director and CEO at Spice Money. Gentlemen and Opasna will be joining us shortly. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Mr. Padmanabhan, let me start by asking you, as far as customers are concerned, uh, you know, is there anything that changes for them at all when they're making these UPI transactions? Well, uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, that's a very interesting question because having been in Reserve Bank for so long, I believe that once the charges get uh, implemented, at some point of time it gets passed on. So whether it will get passed on immediately, maybe not. Whether this could prove to be a competitive point for some time till this transaction scale up, maybe yes. But ultimately, whether it will get passed on, ultimately all charges get passed on. That's a firm belief I have. Hmm. Um, Sanjeev, uh, what are your thoughts for customers? Does life change or is it largely impacting uh, players like yourself. So, so uh, like uh, Sir said, uh, at, 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 at the present, there is no charge to a consumer. That's the first point. At some point of time, somewhere the charges will get neutralized. Uh, question is, where does it go in the value chain is something that we'll see. Uh, that's my second point. Third, for us, uh, since we are a rural fintech, we see this as a very, very encouraging opportunity because we see a, a wallet as a, as a as an instrument as a very very powerful instrument uh, that we can leverage and use to onboard a digital consumer in rural india and uh, measures like this have you know put a business model uh, to the entire wallet business for players like us so we we are very encouraged by this model. Uh, but Sanjeev, if you could break down for us uh, how exactly, I mean, what is the fees that you will be earning now on these transactions? Because I believe 
uh, the total amount of UPI transactions, the number of UPI transactions that are done exclusively through PPIs are quite insignificant at this point of time. Ritu, I think, I think this, the answer to this is not what's uh, happened so far, but the answer to this is what is going to happen ahead. And this is primarily because if you look at the, the PPI as an instrument, the, uh, the history behind it, uh, I don't think PPI was a very powerful instrument, especially at the back of UPI being linked to bank account over the last few years. Now, what's happened is the fact that PPI became interoperable is now at what positions that uh, instrument as a powerful instrument to be used. So I fundamentally believe it's the future that's going to, uh, you'll see transactions on PPI now that because it's become interoperable, there is unit economics coming in here. I don't think past is the right indicator here, uh, Ritu. Okay, uh, Upasna from MobiQuick is also joining us now. Upasna, um, how do you read into this guideline? Uh, how does life change for MobiQuick? Uh, is at some point, uh, you know, a possibility that customers are impacted because these higher costs could be passed down to them? Well, uh, firstly, I want to say this is a fantastic uh, move by the regulator. I would like to tell you that, uh, you know, we have been working uh, hand in hand with NPCI and uh, it's been now almost two weeks that we have launched a uh, wallet on UPI QR interoperably. And uh, there are at, at least 150 merchants where we are already live with this. This is amazing for the ecosystem, uh, not just for wallet players uh, who have a lot of value to create in the fintech ecosystem, but also for the end customer as well as the merchant. Actually, there are a few USPs that you know come to mind from a customer perspective you know, this is resulting in a lot of convenience because you don't really want to hit your savings account for a 10, 20 rupee transaction. It's far more secure for you to park a little money in a digital wallet and scan the QR code whenever you are want to, uh, buying a tea or a bread or something uh, menial for your daily life. So from a security and uh, convenience perspective, I think it is great. And apart from the fact that, you know, uh, large payment platforms uh, which are built on the roots of a wallet have very strong you know uh, tech integrations resulting in uh, amazing uh, payments as well as dispute resolution refunds cancellations etc move far more smoothly so from a customer perspective and coming to the merchant side i think that uh, you know up to a baseline value uh, i believe of 2000 the transactions will continue to be uh, you know at uh, no mdr so I don't expect uh, there to be a, any massive instance of change. And all of these merchants are anyways used to paying 2% or thereabouts MDR on credit card and 1.5% to 2% to wallet players. Anyways, most of the large merchants, uh, you know, do accept and um, uh, see a lot of transaction volume coming through other payment methods, including wallet. So the fact that they will have to pay for these uh, uh, wallet issued uh, wallet issued transactions on the interoperable QR, I don't think is going to be a deterrent. It is actually going to be a far more powerful um, uh, sort of mix. And I think this coming on the back of uh, just in the last two months, we have seen, um, you know, uh, players, including MobiQuake, go live with uh, credit on UPI Rails as well. Uh, and I think that is also a very strong, um, you know, play. I think all of these things are just going to add to the digital ecosystem in India. And remember, we are a country of 1.4 billion people and not all of those people are transacting digitally yet. So we will need all of these moves to build out the ecosystem for the next five to 10 years. Upasna, yes, uh, Upasna for sure. But uh, if I could ask you for MobiQuick's own wallet, how many users do you have uh, in proportion to the total UPI users uh, just through your wallet to get an understanding of the usage? Sure. So see, India uniquely has about 250 to 300 million digitally paying users across all formats, cards, UPI, wallet put together. Uh, and uh, MobiQuick has publicly stated as part of its uh, draft prospectus also that we have about 135 million registered users and about 60 million fully KYC users on our platform. So we are fairly a large driver in the ecosystem. Of course, uh, you know, we are uh, uh, still catching up on the trend of uh, scaling up our UPI transaction volume. But our goal has always been to have a larger play on the entire ecosystem, which is why we have a stronger play in credit and investment products in addition to payments. Hmm. 
Uh, you know, a couple of things to clarify for the benefit of our viewers. Uh, Mr. Padmanabhan, if you could come in on that. When we say merchants are used to paying, uh, you know, this interchange rate, they'll have to pay more. Uh, by merchants, we mean uh, the banks or, you know, the payment companies which are installing uh, QR codes in their shops or in their stores and acquiring them on the platform, but not merchants directly per se. No, it depends upon, it, it entirely depends upon the arrangement uh, that is put in place. Now, let me take a step back and clarify a couple of things. I think one of the points about the volumes, please remember that this issue became important when Reserve Bank of India started in PPIs are concerned. So this move by the NPCA is quite important to bring about this interoperability because till this was uh, brought in, I think the players were hesitant to uh, come through this system because everything cannot be offered free. So that's, that's a move in the right direction. Uh, le let me state that first. The second issue we need to understand the mindset of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the population that we are talking about in using this UPI, and this statistics may be of some interest to you. Though I may not have the macro numbers, what I understand is 35-40% uh, of the loading of the ballots happen through the UPI. So that's quite a significant number when we are talking about 15 basis points for each load. Now, 55% of these loads are more than 2K, 2,000 rupees. So that again becomes very critical when you look at what's the future ahead for the valid players. Now comes the most interesting part. 80% of the spends are for amounts less than 2,000, on which you cannot charge an interchange. So how the system is going to adjust itself, we need to wait and see. But to your specific question as to who would uh, actually be paying out, it ultimately depends upon the arrangements. Because here, as far as the NPCA is concerned, they have said the acquirer will have to pay to the issuer, vice versa, etc. But ultimately, I would think that uh, the merchants may be paying a part of this to the issuer because that's how in the card system it works. There is an arrangement which works uh, with the respective uh, card networks as to what is the kind of payout that that, that they will be doing and uh, uh, that's how the whole system works but today it has been a sort of a negotiation but how this 1.1 percent is going to be uh, distributed across the system is something that i think both npci and the reserve bank would be watching no, I uh, completely agree, Mr. Padmanabhan, and that has been a sticking point, the unit economics of UPI, because, you know, it is a public good. We're encouraging uh, the public to use it, but the players that are providing the services were not making any money on this, and this is just a start where interchange fee has been added. But, Mr. Padmanabhan, the larger question is, yes, it is a welcome move for the industry. Yes, it is welcome for more innovation to happen in the industry. But what happens with these higher costs? Will they be passed on to the customers at some point? Is that something you expect uh, is likely to happen? I expect so, because I think ultimately, if not, if not immediately, uh, as I said in the beginning, for some time it could play out as a point of competition. For instance, when a max is fixed uh, for, let's say, ATM withdrawals. I think there are banks which offer every withdrawal free. That's a point of competition they see. So this will work. People will compete, but ultimately the cost does get passed on. I don't think in the value chain to what extent it gets passed on, we need to wait and see, but it will get passed on. That's my view. Um, okay. Uh, Sanjeev, if you could also come in on that, that 15 basis point wallet loading fee, for instance, uh, uh, you know, is that going to increase costs? Do you think you'd have to pass them on to customers? Uh, so, Ritu, I'll tell you, for, uh, for, for a lot of the points that Upasana was saying, I think uh, I think it's just not about cost for us. For us, these are measures to get a larger population of India onto a digital platform. And I think that is what is, in my mind, uh, is a very encouraging science on, on everything that's happening in terms of PPI. Uh, this part of 15 BIPs as a, as a uh, cost for load, Yes, it will come. Do we intend to pass it on to consumers at this point of time? Answer is no. Uh, I think there is enough uh, uh, in terms of this product being uh, and, and become even usable, being attractive for a lot of these non-digital consumers to come on a digital platform. I think that is the opportunity. Uh, we're going to focus on making that happen first. 
uh, at spice money uh, and that and especially in rural india so ritu that is what we're going to focus on i don't think we intend to pass on this uh, cost to consumers today All right, uh, you know, uh, Upasana, Sanjeev, and Mr. Padmanabhan, do stay on with us. We have many more questions for you, but we have to take a very short mandatory break. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to News Center. We're in conversation with G. Padmanabhan, also uh, Upasana Taku from Mobi Quick, and Sanjeev Kumar from Spice Money. Uh, gentlemen and Upasana, thank you very much for staying on. Upasana, uh, let me come back to you on that note uh, on whether uh, charges to customers will rise and take that forward to ask that, you know, do you see this as just the start? Uh, do you think we see interchange uh, rates being applied to other modes of payment as well now that, you know, NPCIs need to start with PPI? Yeah, so actually, Ritu, thanks for asking me that question because I wouldn't get so hung up on the actual commercials that are there in the circular right now because I think the more important fundamental point is that this is a step in the right direction for the ecosystem and this will enable more users and more merchants in smaller town India to have access to digital payments. Now, what is the impact of a particular line item in terms of pricing? In fact, if you'll see the circular, it itself says that the pricing will be relooked at, uh, you know, before September 23 itself. So I would say that this is a step in the direction. The final evolution of the pricing models, et cetera, will have an, happen over the course of time. I think what is going to be more important is that you will see more and more players, uh, such as and including MobiQuick, you know, deploying these uh, wallet and UPI interoperable QR codes. And by virtue of that, it will provide more convenience, more access to customers. Not only can they transact with their, um, you know, uh, uh, favorite apps, but they can use uh, different payment methods uh, also. So technically a user can load their wallet uh, app using a debit card, loyalty points, credit card, various methods, and still be able to pay on a UPI QR code in a small town somewhere in India. I think that convenience is the most important and fundamental thing. And the fact that NPCI and RBI and the players are moving in this direction, I think that should be the big news that you should be talking about. No, certainly Upasana, but uh, since you brought up uh, that the pricing is going to be re-looked at by the end of September, were players consulted on the pricing? Uh, do you think it's fair? Will it boost digital payments, help you innovate more? Definitely. It will definitely help us more. It will definitely help us innovate because firstly, there is an incentive to go in this direction because there is an MDR available for whoever has issued the wallet to the user. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. And the fact that yeah. previously, in order to participate in the interoperable ecosystem, MobiQuick was participating by enabling UPI payments to happen via the MobiQuick app for its users. And these are all free, you know, UPI to UPI transactions. Mm. So there was no revenue opportunity. The fact that there is a revenue opportunity is the big enabling uh, uh, thought process here. Sanjeev, your thoughts on that? Well, likewise, uh, Ritu. So, <clears throat> like I said, I think the large, I think this is a very positive step, right? That's the first point. And uh, this is all about today we have 200 to 250 uh, million users on UPI, unique. And there is an opportunity to onboard more on a digital platform. I think PPI is one such product. The wallet is one such product. The fact that it's become interoperable now, uh, it, it becomes a very strong use case from a consumer perspective. And uh, enablers like this makes it far more 
uh, meaningful from a from a PPI issue perspective in terms of the business uh, sense. So these are all very very welcome steps, and we are very excited about mm -hmm. uh, this opportunity. Uh, Ritu. All right, uh, you know, of course, uh, wallet interoperability is another big change, and that is also very welcome. But uh, Upasna, Mr. Padmanabhan, and Sanjeev, thank you all for your time here and for ha helping us understand, you know, how life changes, uh, how this benefits users, and if this boosts uh, the digital payment ecosystem in the country. Thank you.